All right, in this video, we are going to discuss valve lash. I'll also let you know how to, to set your valve lash as, as well as I'll let you know where I set my valve lash. Full disclosure, I am by no means a professional engine builder. I've ran this particular motor for about six years. I've done all the work on it myself. Um, before we ran this motor, we ran a Honda GX a uh, four cycle motor for about three seasons and we ran a road tax motor for a couple of seasons and more recently we've we've picked up an iami x30 motor that we're, we're still trying to learn but you know when i started out this stuff does seem kind of daunting kind of intimidating but it's really easier than you think you will make mistakes but that's just part of the learning process as long as you learn from those mistakes you're going to be good to go so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to pull this exhaust off i usually do this with the exhaust on but just so you guys can see what's going on here I'm actually gonna pull this exhaust off so what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to loosen our heat shield here just so I can move it out of the way a little bit so I can get some side cutters in here and cut the safety wire we have on these exhaust header bolts We can get this out of the way far enough so I can cut this safety wire. Yep, all right. Let's get that out of the way. I believe I mentioned in another video that uh, that this safety wire is actually a tech item. Get out of there. Get this other side off. Now that we got our safety wire out of the way, let's get these top two header bolts off. And I like to remove these two first. And I go ahead and leave the support on just so my exhaust isn't dangling on me. And these bolts do have a little washer that you wanna make sure you don't lose. Just a little washer on them. This other side's kind of tricky to get to because it actually kind of sits up underneath your this curve of the exhaust. So I like to use this other style of Allen key to get to this one. Break it loose. All right, I can probably get my ball T handle in there now to get that out the rest of the way. Sure you don't lose your washer. Just like that. And then what we have is we've got one more bolt, five millimeter cap head screw right here that we'll need to remove as well.
Okay, exhaust removed. All right, now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take our rocker cover off. And this has four 10 millimeter bolts that we'll need to crack loose. And you'll need to keep track of these four bolts. Three of them are all gonna be the same size. And then actually this bottom one here is a little bit longer. So you'll just wanna make sure you get the longer bolt back into the bottom when we go to put this back on. And I can already tell I'm gonna need a new rocker cover gasket. So we'll, we'll go ahead and swap that out while we're doing this. All right. And as you can see on this rocker cover gasket, it's already broken right there definitely time to change it okay so from here what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove our spark plug and uh, we'll start our valve lash settings go ahead and get our spark plug out of here and I usually do this with the the engine still mounted to my go-kart I'm gonna let you know this is not fun to, to torque on these bolts with this engine just sliding around the table it's not making things very fun so yeah, if you can just leave your, your motor mounted to the go-kart when you're doing a lot of this stuff, it'll make it a little easier for you. All right. Okay, so when we want to set our valve lash, you're going to want to do it at top dead center. And you're going to want to do it top dead center of the compression stroke. So in order to find the compression stroke, obviously the motor is going to suck air in. Um, the intake valve is going to open to allow that. And then when the intake valve closes, that's going to be your compression stroke. So that's what we're going to be looking for here. So if we just wind our motor and it just happens to be that uh, it looks like we're going to be on our compression stroke right now, let's just make sure. So as you can see, our intake valve will open and then our motor is going to start coming up. And at this point, I, what, I do, what I see a lot of people is they'll stick like a pencil or something down there in where the spark plug came out of in order to find top dead center. But um, I'm going to readjust the camera here and I'm going to show you how I do it. The first time I did this, I stuck a pencil down in there and it actually got stuck on me. So ever, ever since then, I've been real hesitant on, on sticking stuff down in there to find my top dead center. So let me readjust this camera and get a better angle so you can see how I... Okay, so looking at this, it, it, it's still going to be hard for you guys to see, but you'll still be able to get an idea of, of what I'm doing here. So what you like to do is you need to set this at top dead center of your compression stroke. So what I'll do is I'll grab my wrench and I'll put it over here over the top of my clutch bolt. And what I'll do is I'll slowly wind my motor. And if we look at our valves here, you'll notice that our intake valve is, you can't move it. And if we go back a little bit, you'll notice our exhaust valve is completely closed and our intake valve is open. So what we'll do is we'll slowly wind the motor forward. And as you're looking down the, the spark plug hole, you can see the piston. And what I'm just looking for is I'm looking for the piston to come all the way to the top and then start going back down. Looks like we got the top right there. And then once the piston starts going back down, you can kind of play with it, go back and forth, and you can actually find your top dead center. And we'll be right there. And now what you'll notice is that both of our valves are loose, which means our, our, our rocker arms are loose which means that our valves are both closed. And from here, we can go ahead and set our valve lash. Okay, now that we've found top dead center, we're gonna wanna go ahead and loosen up our rocker arm adjusters. And I see a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll just grab their 5 8 inch wrench and they'll just crack them loose. What I actually like to do is I like to loosen them up from the, the locking 
screw that they have in the center. So what I'll do is I'll just put my Allen key on the locking screw and I'll just crack them both loose just like that. And then from here, we can just back them out a little bit with our fingers. So Briggs has a video on their website and that video tells you to go ahead and set these anywhere between one and three thousandths on each, on each valve. Um, I've also found a, another Briggs video where they tell you to set uh, the intake to zero and your exhaust to uh, up to five thousandths. Um, when we first started running this, what I did is I would just go ahead and I set mine to four on both. Uh, that ran great for us. Um, eventually there was a bunch of guys and the, their thought was, oh, you need to set them to zero, zero valve lash on both. So we've tried that as well. And more recently what I've been doing is I've actually been setting uh, more valve lash on my intake than my exhaust. So I've been running two thousandths on my exhaust and six thousandths on my intake. Um, it seems to be working good, so I'm going to continue doing that for a while just to see how our results turn out. So that's how we're going to set this motor now. We're going to go two thousandths exhaust, six thousandths on our intake. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and we'll grab our feeler gauge here. And you're going to want to find your two thousandths feeler gauge. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide it in between the rocker arm and the in the valve and what we'll do is we'll just spin this adjuster closed and you'll want to get it to where there's just a little bit of friction and it wants to hold your feeler gauge in there and this is one of those things there's a good chance that we're gonna to have to set this more than once to make sure we get it where we want but now that we've got our feeler gauge in there what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll hold the adjuster with a 5 8 inch wrench without trying to move it so it retains my setting there. And then what I'll do is I'll just lock it down with the Allen key, just like that. Make sure you lock it down pretty good. You don't want this thing coming loose on you. The Briggs video actually shows the guy locking it down with a torque wrench. I've never done that. I've just always done it by hand. So let's just double check to make sure we've still got the lash that we need. All right, our 2000s gauge still fits in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just go up and I'll try my 3000s gauge and see if it'll slide through. And it doesn't want to slide through. I'll go back to my 2000s. And there we go. Perfect. All right, actually nailed that one on the first try. That doesn't usually happen. I usually have to set it once or twice. So let's move over to our intake. And like I said, I've been running six on the intake, so I'll find my six thousandth feeler gauge right there. We'll just go ahead and drop it in the same spot in between the rocker and the valve. We'll tighten this up with our fingers, finger tight, just just until uh, it feels a little bit of resistance there. Right there, and you can just let your feeler gauges rest on top of your, your engine there while we tighten this down. So we'll carefully put our 5 8 inch wrench over the top, tighten our locking screw down. Just like so. Okay. Let's pull our feeler gauge out and we'll double check this just to make sure we've got the lash we want. So what I'll do is I'll go up a a gauge, I'll grab my seven thousandths feeler gauge. Doesn't want to go in, go back down to my six thousandths. There. Slips right in. Check that. All right, actually nailed that first try both times. That's, that's kind of rare. I usually have to set it more than once. All right, <clears throat> so now we've got our lash set. Let's go ahead and get our rocker cover back on. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna replace my gasket. And when you get these brand new, you're gonna to wanna to cut these out. You're not just gonna to wanna to rip this bag open because you do not wanna crease your gasket. They're pretty thin, can easily crease them. And what you're also gonna to wanna to notice is these go on a certain way. So if I go to slap it on here like this, you're gonna know it doesn't wanna line up. So there's really only one way these can go on. So you just put it on, make sure your holes line up grab our rocker cover, drop it on, 
And if you remember, I said there was there's two different sizes. You got three that are all a little bit shorter and then you've got one long one. So we'll go ahead and drop one of the short ones in the top. Drop a short one in the side. Short one in the other side. And then the, the longer one will go on the bottom. these tightened up and you don't need to stand on these just kind of button them up so that they're they're snug And we're done. Um, I won't bore you guys with throwing the exhaust back on. We, we may do that in another video. But yeah, simple as that. We have set our valve lash. Not too difficult. Like I said, when I first started out, I was somewhat intimidated of it. But once I dove in and did it my first couple times, it, it, it's actually a nothing job. It's real simple to do. Um, definitely something you can do on your own. Or like I've said, if you, if you prefer to have someone do it for you and you'd like to pay them to do it, you could do that as well but definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to check fairly often. I, I do a lot of stuff over excessively, I would imagine. I'm usually checking mine after I get the, the go-kart home after every race weekend. I don't necessarily make any adjustments to it, but I at least pull my, my rocker cover off and I, I check my lash to make sure nothing's moved on me. But yeah, definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to put in your maintenance plan. Find what settings that you like to run, put those in your race plan, and go out and have a good time at the track.